Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video I'm creating a fun summer scene card featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. For my card today I'm going to be incorporating several of the backdrops and I will also bring in these two birthday stamps. These were free when you purchased or when you placed an order with Lawn Fawn during your birthday month. The kangaroo was for this year and the koala was from last year. To begin my card, I'm die cutting a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock using the sunrise backdrop and then I'll go right into ink blending that panel. I did leave the inner pieces of that panel in and I just added a piece of post-it tape to the back just to make it a little bit easier to ink blend. And then I've added mustard seed distress oxide ink to mostly the top of the panel. And then I'm blending that out further with wild honey distress oxide ink. Where the two colors meet, I'm making sure that I go over that area just to remove any harsh lines and make it seem smoothless. Next, I'm going to work on the sky background, and for that, I've die cut a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock using the Stitch Cloud backdrop by Lawn Fun. So, here I kind of wanted a subtle look to the sky background. So, before I take the brush to my panel, I'm just tapping it off a little bit onto the paper underneath. And then I can go in right on top of that panel and ink blend. And the last thing I ink blended for my scene card, I've die cut a panel using the simple stitched hillside borders die. And then I'm going in with mowed lawn and twisted citron distress oxide inks. And that will finally finish all of the ink blending on this card. For my critters on this card, I'm using two stamps that I received free for placing an order during my birthday month over at Lawn Fawn. The Party Kangaroo that I will stamp in a moment is for this year, and unfortunately this little koala was from last year, but I have not used either one of these, so I thought this was a perfect card to bring them in. And I'm sorry, I guess I forgot to hit record when I started coloring the koala's head. But I've left the rest of the coloring in in case you're interested. For the little koala, I'm using some warm grays. And I've started with a W5. And I'm just adding that into the shadow areas. And then I'll come in with my W3 and blend that out. I'm going over where the W5 ends with my W3 and I'm going over that several times until I get a smooth blend between the two colors and then I take that W3 and I extend it just a little bit further into the image. And finally I'm finish, finishing off the rest of the image with a W1. Now, typically, I go over my images at least twice, which I hardly ever leave in my videos just for the time purposes. But I did leave this portion in because for my second time going over this image, I took a shade darker than previously for the shadow areas. So I started with a W7. And then I can go in as I previously did with a W5. Then I'll go in with a W3 to blend that out. And finally I will finish things off with a W1. For his little belly, 
I've left it mostly white. I'm adding a W1 to the inner edges of his belly and then I'll take a W0 to blend that out. And finally, I'm going over the entire image with a blender pen just to blend out any harsh lines where that W0 ended. For my little kangaroo, I'm going to be bringing in E41 to wet the paper. And then typically I use two, sometimes even three shades of the midtone in my blends. So for this one, I'm bringing in E44, which is my darkest shade for the shadows. And I just laid that down in the tiny corners at the outer edges of his face and his um, top of his head. And then I'll take an E43 and blend that out. And then I will add E42 before taking my E41, which is my highlight uh, shade, and going across the entire image. I just want to mention that I do tend to leave a large highlight on most of my images. And that's simply just the look that I like, particularly on tiny images like these. For the rest of the kangaroo, I finished coloring with the exact same combination as his head. I'm adding the E44 on the outer edges of his arms and around the inner parts of his legs as well as a little bit on his tail. Then using my E43, I will blend out the E44 until I have a smooth transition between the two colors. And then I will finish off my image with E42 and E41. I do leave most of his belly white and I think I just use like an E40 or maybe E41 to add a little bit of shading on the inner parts of his belly. Once I finish coloring both of these along with their party hats, I do use the coordinating dies to die cut them out. To finish up the Copic coloring for this video, I've taken the die cut of that leafy backdrop and I've cut off the frame because essentially all I need is the tree and then I'm going to use several shades of the E family markers. I've covered the entire piece with an E43 just kind of messily and then I'm taking what is my darkest shade which is E79 and I'm just flicking in this color on the image I'm not adding a lot of this color because I still want the base shade to be visible. And then I'm coming in with an E44 just to blend out any harshness to that E79 that I added. And then once I had that complete, I thought it needed just a little more um, of the darker shade and so I've brought in an E74 and I've focused that mostly in the middle. So at this point I have all of my components for the card and I kind of had it arranged uh, in a layout that I, I wanted it. I'm going to start adhering the pieces together and I'm taking my sunburst background and I'm adding just a little bit of liquid adhesive. And I'm going to adhere that to the cloud backdrop. And then I'm going to take the hillside and adhere it to the bottom of this panel. And I did leave this hillside a little bit longer than I wanted it. So when I adhered it, I just scooted it down a little bit and trimmed off any excess. I have the sentiment strip which I white heat embossed onto a piece of black cardstock and I die cut using a sentiment banner. 
As well as my focal point images, I've got those popped up on some foam squares before I added them to my little scene. I'll go in and adhere the leaves that I've die cut from the leafy backdrop, which I did color in using my Copic markers. And then finally, to finish off this card, I've used a stitched rectangle die to die cut the frames from black cardstock just to kind of set everything and finish it. I will leave a link to my blog listed down below where you can see the close-up pictures as well as the Copic color combinations that I used. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this process video. If you did, please leave a like on my video and consider subscribing to see more content like this. Thank you so much for stopping by today and I will see you next time.